Welcome back to Thriving Thoughts. I'm your host, Dr. Sherry. conversation with today's guest, Brandy Bean, is so timely. We actually recorded this uh, probably over a month ago before the COVID information has become so global and forced a lot of us into our homes and socially isolating, working from home, that sort of thing. Brandy really shares her personal experience with depression and how dark of a place she got to. And she shares with us how she got out of that. And it has a lot to do with connecting with the right people. So I I just want you to lean in. And even though this conversation was not specifically in regard to our fears and anxieties and worries about the current COVID scare, they are relevant to us right now as many of us have the potential to experience depression as we are isolating. So lean in, be blessed, and be encouraged by my humble, remarkable friend, Brandy Bean. All right. Hey, Brandy. Good morning. Good afternoon. I don't know. What time is it where you are? It is morning, so for another hour. Okay. So it's one oh nine here, which means it's 11.09 your time? Yes, where, ma'am. Where are you at? I am in Phoenix, Arizona. Woohoo! Now- yes. I don't know if I told you this when you and I chatted on the phone, but the last time I was in Phoenix, um, I went for like a, it it wasn't, I was, I was doing my residency at a facility in Virginia and I was like heading up the behavioral program of this kind of residential facility. And uh, so my boss sent me on a trip to check out this other program that was based in Phoenix. And so I go out there and I, I, um, had a great time, had a lot of great Mexican food, like authentic, yep. <laughs> like, you know, like the corn with the paprika and the mayonnaise or whatever yes. they do to it. Yeah. Yes. So much fun. But anyway, um, so I went to this program and I walk into this guy's office and he's got this shaggy standard brown poodle, right? And this this poodle just looks at me. Well, anyway, I sit down like across from the guy's chair, you know, like across from the desk or whatever. Mm-hmm. And this poodle comes up and he just puts his paw like right on my arm and just rested it there and looked at me like for an hour. <laughs> Didn't move. Just rested there. Anyway, so awesome. I, I, share, I share that memory of Phoenix because I never had a dog and I always wanted a shaggy standard brown poodle. And now as it turns out, I have two dogs. They are not shaggy standard brown poodles, but they're hound dogs. <laughs> But anyway, so that's that's my uh, most recent recollection of Phoenix. So have you always lived there? Are you from there? No, I'm actually from Maine originally. Oh, okay. uh, So I was born in Maine. Uh, we moved out here in 96. And so I was in first grade when we moved out here. And I uh, lived here ever since. Left for a little bit when I joined the Navy. Um, left for about eight, nine years okay. and came back because I, I love the weather for the most part. Um, just to get put in perspective, we went, I took my daughter swimming yesterday Yeah. Oh. Wow. and I posted on Facebook and everybody that's in Virginia and other yeah. cold places are like, it's freezing here. How are right. you swimming right now? Right. So that aspect of Arizona, I love, um, I'm very outdoorsy. So I like to hike and stuff like that. And here you have yeah. pretty much anything that you want to do outdoors. You can do here, which yeah. is awesome. How old your daughter? Uh, she's three going on 16. <laughs> so we're, uh, she's really coming into her attitude right now. Uh-huh, it's uh-huh. awesome is, and trying. Is, is she an apple that's close to the tree, Brandon? Yes. Yes. So my mom, the running joke is before I had a child, my mom wished that I would have a child just like me. So it would be payback. Oh, and Thank when you. my daughter, yeah, when my daughter was first born, I'm a single mom and she, uh, so my mom watched her when I worked on Saturdays and she's like, man, if I knew that I was going to be watching her as much as I am, I would not have wished this on you. Right, right. She's like, I get to do it all over again. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Aww. So, but you she's so cute. Me. Yeah. She's definitely my mini me and she, she, even though she can be difficult that time, she's still an awesome little kid. And so I'm just very blessed to, to have her in my life. And, Aww. you know, she, she's fun. 
That is fun. That's really cool. Swimming. Oh my goodness. Yes. As I sit here in like a turtleneck sweater. <laughs> I'm so jealous. Not really. I have all the windows open. It's nice. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah. And they say, they say it's a dry heat, Brandy. That's what it is. is. <laughs> yes. I mean, so I lived in Virginia, <clears throat> excuse me. I lived in Virginia for a while. And so I understand humidity and I don't know which one I'd I would take over the other because yeah. um, there are days in the summer that I hate it. And I'm just like, like you uh, don't want to do anything. It's just so yeah. hot. Um, but it is nice to still be able to go outside and enjoy the yeah. weather without yeah. being a puddle of sweat. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I love that. I love that. I actually lived in the what I consider to be the hottest place on the planet, which I'm sure people that like live in, you know, the Sahara or Afghanistan would disagree. But Baton Rouge, Louisiana, it was like it is hot there. Horrible. I mean, the humidity is just through the roof. Awful. Well, I will I will combat that. I was um deployed to Guam. Oh, okay. All right. There you Guam go. Guam is very it'd be like 100 degrees with 100% humidity and yeah. it, it would like why even shower? Like you're you got the shower and you're still just soaking wet. Oh, so. right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> From the apartment to the car, I'm like why did I even get ready? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Yeah, you trump me. Guam trump that and All right. Fair enough. So, hey, why the navy? Um, well, that's a good question. So when I was in high school, I worked a lot. So I had three jobs in high school. I worked at a grocery store, um, CVS, and then I did, I pulled night shift at Denny's. And wow. so that, that was just my thing. I worked all the time. Wait, 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 wait. Was that out of necessity or just because that's what you love to do? Um, it wasn't necessarily out of necessity. We, we didn't grow up with a ton of money. Um, but my mom made, my mom was a single mom also, and she worked very hard to ensure we had everything yeah. that we needed. Yeah. Um, but when I turned 16, it was a thing. You go get a job. Yeah. Just what you do. If you're able to get a job, you get a job. And good for and I, go Yeah. For and me. I, I liked money and I had to pay for, <laughs> I had to pay for my car and everything right. like that. And I ended up, um, when I was a junior, moving out of my house. Well, I technically stayed in the house as a rental house that we had. And my mom moved out with her husband Okay, and I stayed there with my older sister. So we paid and contributed and stuff. So I learned at a very young age yeah. what it was like to be on your own and to um, provide for yourself. For sure. So, but I enjoyed working. It was something that I was really good at. Mm -hmm. I didn't like school. And so one day my mom asked me, what are you going to do with your life? <laughs> Oh, I, I have no idea. Dreaded yes, question. Yes, the question. And I said, I'll just join the military. And part of me was joking and okay. part of me was serious, but my mom got very excited. Oh. And she's like, Oh, that's awesome. And I could see like a proud mom moment. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, Oh, now I have to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can't disappoint. Right. Yeah. But part of me, um, and if you ever listen to any of my speeches is I actually have a need to serve. And so mm. when nine 11 hit, there was a need inside yeah. of me that I was like, I need to do something. And I didn't know at the time what that entailed or what I would do. Yeah. And so after I signed the dotted line, it kind of came full circle for me. I was like, okay, this is it. Okay. And so I, and I believe God has a plan and that was part of my plan was yeah. to, to join the Navy. Um, but I actually went to join the air force first okay. and I walked into the recruiting office <laughs> and the recruiters were pigs and um, they were horrible. And I said, okay, I'm taking my business somewhere else. Right. I literally walked next door to the Navy recruiting office Next. and they were, they were wonderful. And I'm still actually oh. friends with my recruiters today. So, um, which is, is fun. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It was awesome. Wow. That's incredible. Now, how old were you when nine 11 occurred? I'm going to, I was, like, in, I was in sixth grade, sixth grade. So you felt a desire or a need to serve in the sixth grade. Correct. Yeah. I, um, because I grew up with a single mom and two sisters. And I, I was always this tomboy. So I always felt the need to protect and take care of the house and take care of yeah. my, my siblings and my mom. So I've always had that, that desire to help okay. and do whatever I can. So I'm the, I'm the helper in every situation um, that's gotten me into some trouble into sure. relationships because sure. I just want to fix people. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I've had just that need to do something. I mean, when you watch those planes at the tower, like yeah. you're so helpless. Yeah. That's like, what can I do? So it was just kind of a full circle for me, which is it's cool to think about now. Yeah. Well, what a, so this is really, I'm just gonna juxtapose something that's here. Fine. So 
you okay this is incredible this just shows our um our wisdom difference so yes. when you were in sixth grade 9 11 happened when i was in sixth grade which you probably i don't even know if you know about this but the space shuttle challenger explosion happened yes. mm -hmm. yeah. and i remember we were watching on you know because everybody you stopped class then because it was a big mm -hmm. deal for a space yeah. shuttle to take off so everybody would watch and we i remember sitting in the classroom in sixth grade watching the space shuttle and then we watched it explode and everybody just kind of was like, what just happened? So yeah. much, much smaller scale for sure than 9-11. Mm -hmm. but, but certainly, tragic. yeah, tragedy and, and formative experiences. And so I don't recall, though, having such an epiphany to serve or to do something no. in sixth grade as you did when that occurred. So that's just really, really neat. So what did you spend your time doing in the Navy? And um, can you just share with us a little bit about um, maybe some of the the truths that you learned to speak to yourself while you were in the Navy? Yeah, absolutely. So I became part of an elite group called the Seabees. Um, so for those of you that don't know the Seabees, um, they're a construction battalion. So we actually go in before the Marines and build their bases. Okay. Um, so I did a lot of time in Afghanistan and Guam and Bahrain um, and just really building the, the infrastructure for the Marines to do their job. Got it. So Obviously, you can just assume that in the construction field, there's not a ton of women that raise their hand for that. Right. Um, and I didn't necessarily know what I was getting into. I didn't do any research before. Um, so the process of joining the armed forces is you go down to what they call MEPS, which is the processing center. Okay. And they'll look at your ASVAB score. Mm hmm and they'll say, okay, we have these jobs available that fit your ASVAB score. Okay. And the first one they brought up to me was aviation technician, which is putting bombs in the bottom of planes. I'm like, uh, not something I really want to do. Okay. Is there another option? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, you're really good at math. What about engineering? And I said, I could do that. Yeah. I like math. Okay. That's That works for me. So sign so didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. And then after boot camp, you go to what we call your A school and that's where you learn your job. So that's where you yeah. learn exactly what you're going to be doing. And that's where I learned about the CBs and okay. come to find out they have a very long history. So for those of you that have never heard the CBs, you should watch the John Wayne movie, the fighting CBs. Okay. Because they will tell you all about the CBs and they're true. It's truly amazing. The history of the CBs. Um, so I became an engineering aide. So I did surveying, uh, soils testing. Uh -huh. Sometimes at one of my duty stations, we were like Kinko's essentially. We like did engravings and stuff like that. <laughs> so we're the, we're the, I'll say the brains of the operations, yeah. um, which is, is fun. So being a female in that role yeah. and very few females, it was definitely trying at times because there's a lot of things that, oh, if a senior is giving you special treatment, then you must be sleeping with them. Uh, or Yeah, uh, there's that know, assumption. I, yeah. And so there's a lot of assumptions, especially when yeah. it comes to girls or, oh, you got pregnant. You must have done that on purpose so you didn't have to go to deployment. Mm. Things like that. That didn't happen to me, but that happened to some of my Just constant um, judgment. Colleagues. Yeah. It's just, it's a lot of judgment. And then you have to be, you know, no emotions. Yeah. Because you cry. It's because right. you're a girl. Right. So you're, you're almost taught to just kind of push stuff down, push stuff down and not let it bother you. And or to mimic. The guys. Yeah. yeah. To mimic yeah. being a man. Exactly. Yeah, to to yeah. to just stuff down your femininity, and I just think, wow, like that's that's really trying. How did you how did you combat that? I mean, how did you pick and choose? Because obviously, when you're in a situation like that, Brandy, you have to pick and choose your battles, right? That, I mean, that's that's part of being a smart woman. You don't yeah you don't battle absolutely every, right, but you have to pick and choose your battles. So, um, were there particular areas for you that were just kind of um, non-negotiables that you said, no, I, this is where I stand on this and I'm not going to be, you know, assumed or backed into a corner about this. Did that ever happen for you? Um, not really. So the way that I, I take on life is I'm going to be me to my fullest potential. Yeah. And one thing, like I said before, is I like to work. So I threw myself into my job to mm -hmm. be the best that I could be. Yeah. And I volunteered for everything. I, especially in like my last command, I was, um, I did a lot of the operation side and I loved it and I enjoyed it. So therefore I worked harder at it. So yeah. nobody, I didn't want anybody to ever say she didn't work yeah. for that, right. you know, evaluation that she just got. 
like I wanted people to know, okay, Brandy busted her ass so that she, oh, right. can we swear on this? Is this okay? Go okay. Ahead, girl. <laughs> so, fine. you know, Brandy busted her ass and that's why she got the evaluation yeah. that she did. Yeah. And so that was kind of my, my goal from day one is to make a name for myself in a positive light. Yeah. And did I have hiccups? Absolutely. Cause yeah. I'm human. And, but I made sure that I defined who I was. Yeah. Nobody else defined who I was. Right. And I, there were a lot of females that, I would look at it and they would do stuff. And I'm just like, mm, right. sweetheart, we probably shouldn't do that. But right. but again, that's their choice. And sure. so okay. I just made the choices that I made to not stand out. I didn't want to be, that's Brandy and she's a female. I wanted, that's Brandy. She's a CB. Right. She's doing her job. Right. And I, and that was just me. I didn't want, you know, special treatment because I was a female, Yeah, mm-hmm. you know? And so that, I mean, that's just the way that I looked at it and, you know, conducted my business. Well, and I think what you did there is, um, you stepped in and you decided to focus on using your gifts, using who you were created to be, which is this person exactly. who's, who's got discipline, obviously. I mean, you got to have the gift of discipline to join the military. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. So like, that was yeah. like never an option for me. I mean, yeah, I'm just reckless, but, um, <laughs> but I love that you said that you use your gift gifts and, and that proved successful for you. So I think yeah. that the key, the truth that I'm hearing there is just be authentic to who you are. Don't well, try to be some somebody else. Don't try to be what somebody else expects you to be. Just be you. And that's going to leave a name and a mark for itself. Exactly. Exactly. And find what you're good at. I mean, if you're constantly trying to impress people yeah. and we're human, so we, we always, I think there's always going to be that need to yeah. have that, you know, oh, I just impressed somebody or they think I did a good job, yeah. which is awesome, but that shouldn't be your goal. Right. So for me in every aspect that I'm doing, it's like, am I impressing myself first yeah, off? Like, yeah. am I doing what I want to do because this is my life and I'm right. choosing how I want to live it? Um, so if you get too wrapped up in what other people think of you, then that's, I think that's when yeah. you start making little decisions that maybe weren't the best. Yeah. And I think, um, it's like, I, you know, I do, I do care what people think of me in this regard. I, I want you to see me as a person of integrity and character and consistency. Like that's, that's who I want you to see. So I do care about that. Right. And, and I think caring about that allows us to also experience um, bouts of humility where when we're not those things, we can be like, okay, yeah, I, I, I made a little misstep there. Let me, let me fix that. Right. So that's good stuff. So Brandy, I want to switch gears just for a second. Um, oh, by the way, before we do that, thank you for your service. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for stepping up to fill a need after such a great tragedy. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, so you and I both have a similar passions, but in different, um, we've gotten there via different routes. So Mm -hmm. I know that you have a a passion for women because you have a podcast for women and I want you to talk about that. Um, and then I also know that you have a passion for mental health and mental well being. And so which one of those do you want to tackle first? Uh, we can go just straight into the nitty gritty and talk about mental health. You got it. Let's do it. So, um, this is actually a really new passion for me. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to preface this with, if you would have asked me this question a year ago, my answer would have been a lot different. Okay. So I was very, people close to me have committed suicide and I was always like, why would you do that? That's so selfish mm-hmm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is me a year ago. Mm-hmm. That's so selfish. I can't believe you would do that. How could life be that bad yeah. that you would want to take your own life? Because I didn't understand because I'd never been there. Yeah. I've always been very mentally strong and handled whatever came my way. Um, and then let's fast forward to yeah. this past year. So 2019 was a very rough year for me. Mm-hmm. Um, we lost three of my grandparents within 18 months. Mm-hmm. And the last one was my grandmother. And she lived with me for a little bit before she passed. And it was a very unexpected pass. Uh, she was on hospice, but it was... We really put her on hospice just to ease for us so that we didn't right. have to take her. There was nothing like imminent her. happening. No, yeah. no. And so, and we still don't really know how she passed. And so that still kind of lingers. Um, but right after that happened, I hit kind of a wall with what I wanted to do with my life. Mm-hmm. So I work with my mom. She is a professional speaker. So I do a lot of stuff for her. We also have a training company that I work for. Um, but I, I was feeling as if it wasn't fueling anything for me. Mm-hmm. And 
I just kind of got to a point with, with my life, like, what am I doing? I'm living way beyond paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. I'm just taking out debt to, to survive at this point. Mm. But I felt guilty for trying to go and find another job. Okay. And so, and this all is happening within a three week period of my grandmother passing so, that this is hitting me. Yeah. So can you touch on that for a second? Where was the mm-hmm. guilt coming from for going to get another job? So me and my, I've been working with my mom for three and a half years now. Okay. Um, and, and I love it and I do good work and we are, you know, growing good businesses, but it was her businesses and I was kind of just, okay, yeah, Brandy's there. We know Brandy, right. but they, they were her businesses and which is fine. Like she grew them and sure. deserves all the credit. Um, but it but wasn't your me, passion, but it wasn't my passion. Yeah. yeah. And I want to be a speaker. So that is something that is in, you know, my line of sight that I want to do. But again, I didn't really know what I wanted to speak on. So I kind of dabbled in customer service and speaking like for customer service, but it wasn't, it wasn't fueling. It wasn't your it. Yeah. It wasn't my it. it. And I, and I feel like at the time I felt like I was just kind of pushing stuff down. Mm. Kind of like I said, the yeah. military kind of teaches you to push stuff down. Right. And it got to a point one night, <clears throat> excuse me, my uh, sister was watching my my daughter for me. And I went home and I just had a mental breakdown. I'm like, I can't handle this. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know. And I've always been very well off with money. Um, and I just got to a point where I wasn't. Yeah. And that if you go from a point where being good with money and then not being good with money, it takes a very big toll on you. Yeah. Hey, and Brandi, I just, can I interrupt yeah. you there for a sec? What, Absolutely. what contributed to that process? Um, so our business became more, our business model changed essentially, mm-hmm. um, where we weren't doing the classes that we were doing before. Uh-huh. So the hours were lower. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I was getting paid hourly. And then when you throw on top of being depressed, yeah. I didn't necessarily want to work Got as it. well. So then yep. I wasn't doing as much. So this is, it's definitely like this situation. I mean, it has nothing to do with the businesses themselves, but I, I just didn't want to work. Like even getting out of bed in the morning was a struggle. When you, and, when you think yeah. about that and when you look back on that, Brandy, because I, I don't want to just gloss over that because I know that there's women listening who want, want to hear a little more from you about that. Yeah. Um, because what you're saying is so, so beautifully and painfully true that, um, it's so fascinating to me that the, the cure, the part of the cure for depression is to prescribe connecting and doing and getting out of bed and doing all of yeah. these things and get, and and to kind of put the cart before the horse, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. But then the significant part of depression is like, I can't even, like, I can't, I just can't yeah. even do it. No. Um, so can you just touch on, on that maybe like, Did you, what were some of those struggles, those tugs of war like in your mind with that during that time? Yeah. I mean, one of the biggest things was um, cleaning my house. Mm. Like I didn't want to, my house was trash. And it's like, I don't, I don't like living in this yet. I can't bring myself to do anything about it. Right, right. And Mm. then it's like eating. Oh, I know I need to eat better. I need to feed my child better. Yeah. But I don't even have the energy to cook a right. pot of spaghetti. Right. So I'm ordering pizza. Right. Which then doesn't help yeah, because you're broke. Is right. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's a it's a constant struggle. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, I'll take out this personal loan mm-hmm. and that will help me get back on my feet. But guess what? That runs out very quickly. Yes. Yeah. And then, then what do you do? You're back in that same struggle. And it was just a never ending pattern. And I would have some good days where I'd get up, take a shower, get my daughter to daycare. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to clean my house today. And I clean my house and that's okay. That's good. That's a small victory. But then what happens tomorrow? Oh, I haven't worked any. So now I'm not going to get paid. And then you get, just find yourself right back in that situation. A vicious cycle. Yes. A very vicious cycle. And so that night, um, I hit a very, very low point to the point that I was ready to take my life. Mm. And it, I felt I was at the point where I couldn't, I couldn't get out of that hole. And I didn't know yeah. because everybody that I would talk to and, and I will make this point, everybody that I would talk to, they're very strong women 
And they're like, no, no, you have so many good things going. Like you have so many good things. Yeah. And instead of just listening yeah. to me, yeah. they wanted to solve my problems. Right, right, right. I, I know what I need to do. Yeah. <laughs> I know that I need to get up and work and shower and do all that. I know that. But when you don't have the energy and you're yeah. feeling so trapped, like it was almost impossible. Like I don't want to say impossible, but it felt impossible. It feels to sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but then I would try to reach out. And it's like, man, I'm really struggling right now. No, you got this. You can do this. Oh, all these business opportunities. And it's like, that's not what I want to hear. Right. Like, can you just talk to me and be supportive? Right. So one of my things I will say is if you are feeling that way, yeah. find somebody, and it doesn't have to be somebody that you're super close with, find somebody that is not going to try to solve your problems. Yeah. Like, that's not a helper. Like, so find how, somebody that you can, how, yeah. how would you, how would you tell them to say that? Like, I mean, because, so let's, let's speak the truth here. You know, when you're, when you're in a mindset of, of depression, you're not, mm-hmm. you're not thinking clearly. I mean, you're, no. you're on the outside of this now. And so it's a little bit easier for you to see that. Now, looking back on yourself, I'm sure you didn't, you didn't have the uh, presence of clarity of mind to be able to say, I don't need you to fix this. What I need is for you to listen. So what's a way that the women listening, let's suppose that maybe they're in that situation. What's just something simple that you could give to them to say to a friend um, uh, talking about what they need or what they don't need? Yeah, I would, I would absolutely start by start out by saying, I'm calling you tonight because I am, you know, needing some, somebody to just talk to. Yeah. So I would prefer you just to listen and let me just kind of vent. Yeah. And I think a vent is a very good word of, hey, I'm going to just spill out my, my guts right now. And I just need you to listen. And, and I would set the preference of this is what I'm hoping to accomplish out of this call. Cause that's something I didn't do because at the time I didn't, I didn't necessarily know what I needed to because like I said, this was very new for me. And, you know, I would, you know, talk to, you know, my close friends and they're like, well, okay, like I hear that you're, you're not doing well, but you know, you're doing so great in all these other areas, but it's like, can we focus on the areas I'm not doing good at? And just let me kind of talk where I'm at and maybe help me come up with a plan or something that is not a dramatic change in my life. Right. So, and I'll, and I'll get to kind of how I got out of this, um, in a little bit. Yeah. And I think that will actually help people when they are in that rut yeah. of what they can actually do to help themselves. Yeah. Um, hey, Brandy, can I add something to yeah. that real quick? Absolutely. So I think too, that, um, there's something that we need to understand that we're not able to see. And so you, you could be in a season of depression. You could be in a season of anxiety. You could be in a season of just kind of fear of doldrums, whatever it is for you right now. And, um, sometimes because literally there is nobody that has the ability, there's nobody, even somebody that's been through it. There's nobody that has the ability to really understand how you're feeling. Right. Exactly. Um, and so I think that the other, the other thing that we need to, we need to, a truth that we need to believe in and we need to understand is that when other people that care about us, like for you, for example, when people that you cared about you and they were talking to you and they were like, you've got this and this is great and blah, blah, blah. It's not because they're being dismissive. It's not because they don't care. It's not because they don't think your issues are, it's be, it, or are important. It's because they fear for you. Yep. And out of that fear comes a desperation to fix. Yep. And not, and not an acceptance to hear, because if I just sit and listen, then I'm not helping you. And I'm so scared for mm-hmm. you, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. And that's, it's a very good point. And it's funny. One of, um, one of my best friends, she, uh, when I reached out to her and we were on the phone and she's just spewing off different businesses that I could do, <laughs> which little did she know is just tearing me down even more. She, that night I prayed and I said, okay, I need, I need something. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it, like, I need something. And she ended up texting me and it was pretty late at night. Aww. And she's like, I'm sorry that I wasn't fully listening to you mm-hmm. and whatever you need, I'm here. And I, it was almost like God put a little thing yeah. in there. Like hey, what you did was not, was not helpful, right. but you know, but it came from a good place yeah, in our absolutely. heart. And, you know, I would never like bash anybody for trying to help, but understand that when somebody comes to you that is in a, a 
desperate spot yeah. like that. That's so delicate that delicate, every yeah. word that you say, they're going to internalize. Yeah. And, and interpret the heck there, out of it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And if it's not, if your tone is not perfect, right. like <laughs> I mean, every, everything, because then it's like, well, they think I'm a failure too. The night that I had my, my mental breakdown was a Friday night. Saturday morning, I was supposed to drive my mom to the airport. And my mom, when she flies, she's the type of flyer that likes to get there, you know, two hours early. Sure, like, yeah. Very anxious flyer. And so <laughs> this is something that you never want to mess up is right. getting her to the airport. Right. Well, because I was up all night, like debating whether I should take my life or not, or what mm. I should do, what I'm doing. And, you know, found myself, you know, drinking beer and just right. not really caring about my life. Right. I overslept. And woke up to her calling me upset, obviously, which she has every right to be, sure. that I was not there to pick her up and she was just going to drive herself to the airport. So here I am like, okay, I can't even get this right. 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 And how simple is it just to wake up on time and take somebody to the airport? Mm. And so it was just one thing after another. Well, then I had to go get my daughter. So, and I will say this, if it wasn't for my daughter, I don't know what would have happened that night mm. um, because then I had to go be mom. And yeah. obviously I didn't want her to sense anything or know that mama was upset or anything like that. Um, yeah. I tried to be very, try to save any negative emotion to not be around her um, yeah. to a point. Like if people are yelling, like we leave the room and whatnot. So, so then I had to be mom. Well, then Monday, God stepped in. Hmm. because in my mind, I'm still like, okay, like, what am I, what am I doing? Yeah. And I had an appointment at the VA and for my ankle. Mm -hmm. And at first I wasn't going to go. I'm like, no, I've waited like a month for this appointment. Like I need to go. So I go and they're like, oh, this is your first appointment. And I said, yes. And she said, okay, we require everyone to see mental health. Mm. And I said, nope, I'm good. <laughs> and She's like, it's like presented to you on a pretty silver correct. tray, and you're like, yep. nope, nope, I'm good, really, I'm fine. Yeah. And she could probably tell, like, my eyes were probably still puffy. Like, she could probably tell, like, I was not in a good in a good space. And she said, I'm sorry, Miss Bean, but you have to go. And she said, it's a requirement. She's like, they just want to talk to you about their program, and then you can see your doctor. And yeah, like, and they're like holding me hostage here. Right. So I'm like, fine, I'll go see mental health. So this young intern <laughs> comes and gets me and we go into his office and he's like, okay, I'm just going to kind of give you a brief overview of our, of our system that we have. And then he's like, I'm going to give you like a little survey to take. And then from there, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Sure. I said, okay. So he talks about their program and he gives me this survey. And as I'm answering these questions, cause I'm being honest, cause at the same time, I'm like, yes, I need help, but I didn't necessarily want help. Because right. I didn't want the stigma, you right. know, the stigma. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. So I didn't want the stigma. And he's after, you know, seeing my my results, he's like, okay, he's like, well, let's talk about what's going on. And he probably regretted asking me that question because I unleashed everything that was inside of me. Mm -hmm. I'm like ugly crying. He nice. probably couldn't even understand me. And he's like, so calmly, he's like, so I think you would benefit from our <laughs> program. <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, okay. And like, what was I going to say? Yeah. No, I'm fine. Totally fine. Well, you know, can I, I want to, I want to touch on that yeah. something really quickly. So there is such, there is such beauty in, um, opening up to a complete stranger. Oh yes. There's almost much more comfort in opening up to a stranger, um, than there is opening up to somebody close to you in your circle because there's a fear, of. Uh, like I have to see you again. Like I have to see you throughout my day. If you're in my circle, I have to see you. I have to deal with you. And and then I have to imagine what your judgments are, right? Mm -hmm. Here's this stranger and he's going, okay. Like in other words, like it's cool that this is going to yeah. be okay. Like we're going to, you know, yeah. we're going to get through this and we're not going to, oh my goodness. Okay. What can you do? Uh, you could do this business. Uh, you could do this yep. business. Right. Right. So yeah, that's great. Go ahead. Sorry yeah, to interrupt. Was, no, you're totally fine, but you're completely correct. And, you know, when I say, you know, be careful of who you go to to ask for advice, because yeah. I went to my, my circle first and it got me nowhere. And it took me to opening up to this complete stranger to actually realize 
what I was actually internalizing that I didn't realize. And a lot mm. of it stemmed from my grandma. Mm. And so I had a lot of guilt and stuff that led up to that. And I didn't realize I wasn't processing it. Yeah. And it, and it will take me back to when I was in the military of just pushing those feelings down and pushing them down and not ever really handling them yeah. properly. Right. And just kind of brushing them over. Mm-hmm. And so throughout the eight week program that I did, um, we talked about literally everything in my life, which was cool, but scary at the same time because yeah. it was stuff I pushed down so far that I didn't think I would ever bring back up again. Mm-hmm. Um, now, let me ask you a yeah. question. What was the eight week program? Was, was it individual? Was it group? It was individual. So I went, um, twice a week for okay. eight weeks. Wow. And That's intense. It, yeah. And it was, and it was awesome. And it was, it was just 30 minute sessions. So it didn't feel like I was there forever. And he would give me like different homeworks to do Mm -hmm. and whatever I wanted to talk about was what we talked about. So I didn't feel, I never felt pressured. And I will give a shout out to the VA because I do think they have a negative, um, negative opinions out there. And and he was, he was wonderful. So, I mean, he sounds like they saved your life. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. Wow. So, so now fast forward. So I did my eight week, my eight week program, which was very helpful. And I would recommend anybody to go seek professional help. And then after that, so I ended that in November, mm-hmm. end of October, November. Mm-hmm. And we had the holidays, which were rough because now I have no grandparents. Right. Right. And I kind of spun backwards a little uh-huh. bit, not full extent, but sure. still like, what am I doing? finances aren't getting any better. Yeah. Like I need to, I need to figure out my life. Like I have a three-year-old staring back at me. What the hell am I doing? Right. And honestly, it took me to about four weeks ago Yeah. to actually make a change. So I actually am starting with my health. So mm-hmm. there's three areas that I want to focus on. So okay. finances, health, and then mental. Okay. And I feel like my mental is good because I'm still putting into practice what I learned. Yeah. Um, during my, my program that I did. And then my health, my, I mean, I gained since June, I gained 25 pounds mm-hmm. and I'm five, three. So you can just imagine like that's a lot of weight on yeah. a small structure. Yeah. And I just wasn't happy. Like right. I was, I was miserable. So I started doing just watching what I eat. Yeah. I work out almost daily and it's amazing just my mindset for yes. everything else in my life. Yes, yes. Just having that little shoot of endorphins, even if yes. it's like, oh, I can't go to the gym, but I'm going to go for a hike. Or yes, I took my daughter to the pool yesterday, and it's not really a workout, but it created endorphins. But, I yes, was off my does. phone. Yeah, and it, it was it was really nice. So, well, you know, there's a lot of research, Brandy, that shows that um, a, a a low dose anti antidepressant um, the effects of that are equivalent to the effects of daily exercise and self care. I mean, I you can that, basically, yeah, basically, you can get you can make the same chemical changes in your brain by mm-hmm. doing the things that you're talking about. And I think a lot of times people don't believe that, but hearing it from somebody like you who's gone through it and who's feeling the the benefits of that, I think that's incredible. Yeah, and I'm not doing anything crazy. Um, and I is funny when I first went in to talk to the guy, the mental health uh, gentleman, I said, I said, I don't want to be put on medication. Mm. Like I was very anti, do not give me antidepressants. And he said, well, that's not our first step. Like our first wow. step is like actually talking and figuring out what's best for you. That's incredible. Um, that's kind of rare, yeah. actually. And, yeah. and, and it's rare too, because most people, Brandy, go to talk to their, um, general practitioner as opposed to a specialized mental health expert. Mm-hmm. And when they end up talking to their GP, they end up getting a script instead of, yeah. instead of what this gentleman told you. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was great. If I knew his name, I would totally give him a shout out. But, yeah. um, yeah. So I've just been, I've been working out. So I've been really focused on, my, my health and what I'm putting into my body. Yeah. Um, so I'm down 12 pounds already. Nice. Congratulations. And yes. Thank you. It's been, it's been awesome. It's been difficult, but it's forcing me. I don't want to say forcing, but it's, it's making me want to go and work out. Yeah. And right. right. It gives you the yeah. motivation. If you, if you do the thing, you want to do the thing more. Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, and I think you're, I think too, I think it sounds like something that you said, you know, you, it's not necessarily that you went 
all the way backwards, um, there's a couple of, of truths there that I want to point out. One is that I believe, Brandy, that we never truly overcome anything. I think that sometimes there are threads of things that of emotional experiences that kind of are like an undercurrent and sometimes they swell to the surface every once in a while. And I think it's important for us to expect that and and not not to like wait for it and fear for it, yeah. but to understand that there's an ebb and a flow, right? Yeah. And and there's gonna be times where it feels like we're going backwards. We're not. It's just that's swelling up a little bit more. Yeah. And we just become um, more and more, uh, I guess, facile for lack of a better word in, in handling it, yeah. we, be- we become more, uh, um, readily aware of the signs that say, oh, maybe I'm going backwards and then we can start to tackle that. So that's one truth. And then the other thing is that it sounds like you, you did a lot of mental work before you were in a place to start to do the physical work, which actually enhances then the, the mental work. Correct. So. Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and to your point of being able to kind of understand that you're, you may have setbacks, mm-hmm. but to, to recognize it early. Yeah. So there's been days where I wake up and I'm like, I just, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. And it's like, okay, let's go for a walk. Right. And it's just that little bit of, okay, I'm going to take the dog for a walk. And it, just that little bit of exercise yeah. gives me almost like a little shot of, That's of right. endorphins. That's like, right. okay, let's go. We got yeah. this. Take a shower. You're good. Mm-hmm. Get some work done. Yeah. And, but I'm recognizing it early. So it's like, okay, maybe I have a day that I don't do anything, just be lazy. And, but then I feel bad. But then it's like, well, <laughs> one day is better than, four months. So, well, you know, and I, I say, you know, it's okay to be there. Just don't stay there. Stay there. Absolutely. You know, and Absolutely. so if, if we can just not be so harsh on ourselves. I mean, we all have couch days. We mm-hmm. all have days where maybe our bodies leave the house, but our mind stays on the couch. Like, I mean, yeah, we have couch days and I think that's, Absolutely. it's okay. Let's give ourselves Agreed. some grace for that. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Yes. And I'm, I'm definitely guilty of, of that. And I am finding ways to give me more grace and to praise myself yeah. on things that I, that I am doing. Yes. So even on the days that I'm like, man, I didn't really get a lot of stuff done, but I'm like, what did I get done? There okay. I go. got one thing done. Awesome. Okay. That's cool. That's and really, yep. mark that as a win. <laughs> so just being able to be honest with yourself. And that was something that I was not honest with myself. Yeah. Excuse me. Before this all happened was I'm like, nope, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. And yeah, oh, they don't like me. Why don't they like me? It doesn't make sense. And then you actually have to look like, okay, well, I've been a horrible friend the last six months yeah, and may have snapped at people because I was too busy dealing with what's internally, right? you know, going on. And so once I started being open and honest with myself, that's when things really started shifting for me. Yeah. Um, And so I'm like, yeah. And I'm still obviously a work in progress, which I think we all are. And, you know, I understand that it's a long journey and it's not an overnight fix, but every day it's getting easier. Um, and I, you know, think about like, okay, what is the lifestyle that I want to portray to my daughter? Yeah. Like, what do I want her to understand about life and how to deal with, you know, stuff that happens because you're going to hit bumps in the road, no matter who you are. And I just want her to be equipped to handle it. So, and she's at a perfect age right now where she, you know, she said the other day, she's like, Oh, I, I like it when you're, when you laugh, mm. like I was like laughing and I'm like, wow, like from a three-year-old, like she's so observant yeah. and you don't necessarily realize how observant those around you are. Yeah. Um, so it's, like, it's, it's been, I like it when good. I laugh too, honey, you know, right. like we're all better off <laughs> yep. when mommy's laughing, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. That's beautiful. So does that play, how does that play into well, wait, before I get there, let me just ask you this because you brought up something that is like the foundation of my entire message of having a thriving thought world. The prerequisite to do that is to be honest with yourself. Yes. So I wonder if you could share maybe just one thing um, that as you look back, you realized that maybe you weren't being honest with yourself and how you came to a place of honesty with yourself. Um, well, actually one that I'm dealing with right now is I had a very unhealthy relationship with food Mm. and I didn't realize it because I play sports and like 
am active. And so it's totally okay for me to eat this 1200 calorie meal in one sitting. <laughs> right. And now, now I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I would do that. And I would have no guilt over it. Yeah. And I wonder why I gained so much weight. But honestly, it stems back to um, when I was little. I mean, I remember I was, gosh, probably first or second grade. And we'd go out to like a barbecue place and I order a whole rack of ribs. And it's like, I'm a kid eating right. a full rack of ribs. Like I've always been an eater. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't ever really caught up with me until, you know, I got older. And, yeah. and so, but I never handled that. And I never, I was never, I made excuses for it. Like, mm-hmm. oh, it's okay for me to have a milkshake because I'm not fat. I'm not overweight. Um, it's okay for me to eat this entire appetizer plus my entire meal plus a dessert. It's okay. And so, and I was very, like, I would just make excuses for myself. It's okay if I don't want to go work out. It's okay. It's fine. So, but now I, I, I'm not allowing that to be an option. Okay. And so the truth is, Brandy, that you can do those things. You can say, it's okay to do this. It's okay not to do this. If you are also willing to then be okay with the results of that. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 100% you- right there. <laughs> But you can't say it's okay and then not be happy with the results. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I used to be a, a judger and I would mm. judge people. Oh, yeah. And I may not judge out loud, but I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't. <laughs> I judge like, in I, secrecy. I judge in secrecy. I was a I was a very big judger, especially when it came to mental health because I, I was strong and I handled yeah. it perfectly. And yeah. how could you let it get to that point? And, you know, like it's horrible. And it's not horrible. Don't judge that. It's normal, by the way, but it's great. (laughs) It's great that you are being honest with yourself. Yes. Yes. And so, but I have a newfound like appreciation for people um, through this journey, which is nice because I now I feel like, okay, I can talk to you and know somewhat what to say and how to act when somebody's in that position where before I wouldn't like you'd see people post on Facebook, like, Oh, I'm having a rough time. And people be like, Oh, reach out if you want. And it's like, no, you like, just like now I know I to reach out and I know, you know, what I would want to hear. Right. And stuff. And so it's much more sensitive to the needs of others. Yeah. Yes. Which that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah, that's wonderful. So how does that play into, how does your own internal successes, your own growth internally, how does that play into your growth as a podcaster? So tell our listeners about that. Yeah, well, let me first start talking about what the podcast is. Um, yeah. And then I'll go into kind of how we got there. So our podcast, it's me and my mom, and it's called See How I Did That. I love um, that. And so the point of the podcast is for people uh, mainly women. Um, we're not opposed to men on the show, but we um, are directed primarily to women yeah. of how you overcame something. It could be as simple as, I don't know, I was adopted. And yeah. how did you overcome that? Or right. we had a lady on there who her son died and her mom got murdered when she mm. was in school. And it's like, how do you, wow, those two, two tragic things. How right. like I don't know if I could overcome that. How did right. you overcome that? Right. And It's very beautiful because we're learning so much about people that we are actually friends with that we had no idea. Mm -hmm. And peeling back the layers. Yes, peeling back the layers. Well, everyone has a story and we we so believe that. And it doesn't matter what you overcame. The fact that you overcame it is awesome and our listeners want to hear it. And so it's coming from a place of like, we just want to hear your stories and we want to help somebody, even if your story only helps one person, Mm -hmm. like we want to put that out so we can help that one person. And we're just, we're very big advocates for women helping women. Um, I think prior to this generation that we're in right now, it's kind of always been like, oh, you tear down women, like they're your competition. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, why? Like we should be our biggest fans. Like, like we should be supporting other women, like nothing against men, but if we don't have the women's back, then who does, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And so that's really how we're trying to change kind of that stigma. And we're both part of um, a lot of like women's entrepreneur groups and, um, you know, different women, powerhouse women groups that really just focus on helping women and overcoming whatever challenges, whether it be with business and they want to start their own business or, you know, they're a single mom or they're just dealing with, you know, a bad relationship, whatever that yeah. is. I mean, we literally have it all on our podcast. I mean, anything that you can think of somebody overcoming, 
we have it on our podcast. Um, so it's been really eye opening. Mm -hmm. And when we first decided, we had been talking about a podcast for a while. And it wasn't actually we started in December, which is kind of crazy. If you think of where I was at in December was not a great place. Yeah. But hearing these women's stories actually kind of helped me. Yeah, girl, say that. I I know. I know. So then I was like, okay, this is cool. And we're making a difference. Yeah. And it's, it's just been very eye opening and we've had a really good response to it. Yeah. Um, so I'm, it's, I'm it's a really great show and yeah. I love you guys. Y- y- you embrace brevity. I do not. My episodes are all about an hour. Yours are about 30 minutes. So I love that. Um, yeah. We, well, we talk, um, uh, when we do our interviews, so we talk for like 45 minutes. Um, and then we, cause sometimes you get off topic. We like to yeah. talk a lot if you haven't yeah. noticed. And yeah. so we get, oh, I do too. Sometimes. And I'm like, no, yeah. we're keeping that. We're keeping yeah. that. Yeah. So, we, I mean, there's some, been some episodes that are a little bit longer, but, um, for most yeah. part, we try to like steer it on track and, uh, yeah, we, we just have a lot of fun. It's kind of a fun bonding thing that me and my mom get to do together. Yeah. That's not really work. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so how can the listeners find, see how I did that? Yeah. So we are on all the major social media streams. So you can just, um, Facebook, see how I did that. Instagram, see how I did that. Um, okay. Twitter, see how I did that. Okay. Well, um, it's in the show notes too. Yeah, so. yeah. And I can send you the email. Great. Um, but yeah, we, we would love to have any listeners. So if there's somebody that, you know, that would be a great, a great uh, guest on our show. We, we want yeah. them on. Yeah. Um, and we're not opposed to men. I'll just throw that out. But so yeah. this is so funny that you say that, Brandy. <laughs> so I go to the dog park every morning at 730 with my two hounds. And there's this crew. And it's like the 730 in the morning dog park crew. So there's like <laughs> six adults and like 11 dogs running around. Yeah. And it's super fun. And we just walk up and down the dog park. Our dog park is like huge. It's like two tenths of a mile long one wow. way. Yeah. So anyway, we're walking around and this one gentleman, he is so funny. He cracks me up every morning. He's like, you know, you need to have me on your podcast, Sherry. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to have you on my podcast, Mike. (laughs) Anyway, it's just hilarious because he's like, I'm going to crack you one day. (laughs) One day. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, um, there's gentlemen that we have, we have our eye on to have on our podcast, um, just because they have a really good story. Um, And we don't want to necessarily single anybody out, you know, but, but at the same time, like, you know, our podcast, like our tagline is real woman, real talk, real inspiration. (laughs) (laughs) So, Hey, let's get real as we're getting ready to close out here. So what's one of the lies that you've struggled with over time? It might've been something that you've struggled with your whole life that maybe you believed based on, um, your family of origin, or maybe it's something that you believed based on your experience in the military. Um, what's a lie that you struggled with that you've had to learn how to speak truth over? Mm, that's a good question. Um, See, I didn't even tell you I was going to ask you that. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, did. I think that's okay. So I think a, a lie that I am learning to get over and to not believe anymore. Okay. Um, would be that I can fix everybody. Mm. And why I say that, um, and we didn't really dive into relationships. Um, but I like to see, I like to find people that are struggling regardless of what area it is. And I feel like I can help them. I can be the solver of their problems. Yeah. And it's primarily people that are in a different state than I am. Mm -hmm. Um, So up until recently, like I've always considered myself very successful and I'm, I'm getting successful. I'm getting back on track, but up until, you know, when I was in the Navy and stuff like I had, I had my shit together. Yeah. And so I would seek out people to help. Well, and I would, can I just, can I just speak a little truth over that? Yes. Speak speak some truth. I'm going to because you are successful and success is not measured in your bank account. Success is not measured in your mental state. Success is measured in the decisions that you make every day. This is true. All right. Yes. I just had to interrupt you there. I am making better successful choices right now. Yeah. So so I I think that that's a lie that I've had to work on myself um because i get so focused on other people that i forget about myself. Mhm. Yeah. So oh, that's, good. that's that's a struggle for a lot of us i think. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I, and I've done really, it, honestly, it took this last six months to really figure that one out. Yeah. And I'm finally at a point where, you know, I need to just focus on myself <laughs> because if not, I'm going to end right back up where I was in August. So don't yeah, you no, just I, love this, like coming face to face with yourself stuff? Yes. It's, it's not I'm easy it. work. It's not <laughs> easy work. That's for no, sure. No, it's not. But, but it gives you almost more confidence. Sure. Um, yeah. I've always been a pretty confident person and I'm comfortable in my own skin. And, and so that's something I never fully struggled with. However, the confidence I have now is a completely different level. Yeah. Like I, I am comfortable with my decisions. I'm comfortable with what I say. Mm-hmm. I am comfortable talking to people about stuff that I wouldn't have felt comfortable talking about eight months ago. Right. Um, like I'm just, I'm, I'm truly an open book. And I used to always say that, Oh, I'm an open book. Ask yeah. me anything. But secretly I'm like, please don't ask me don't. <laughs> everything except that. <laughs> right. right. But now I'm just like, ask me anything. Ask like me. I, yeah. I will tell you anything because I know talking is me. Not talking is what got me to where it was. So, so now, uh. now I talk all the time. That's so beautiful. I just did. So every six um, interviews, I do a solo episode and my last solo episode, I, I just love how this is ta- nice. Just tag on to that. But um, I did it, it uh, uh, where I talked about brokenness and how, when we, there's, there's such beauty in brokenness, not in brokenness itself, but because when we come face to face with our brokenness, we realize that we have a need. And when we realize that we have a need, we realize that that need is to connect and to share. Yes. And so that's what you're talking about is just being open. And because then not only do you open yourself up to give and serve other people, but you open yourself up to be served and given to. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's so here's... Well put. Here's one question that I ask all of my guests, Brandy, and you're no exception. So I want to leave the women listening with one truth that if they remember nothing else from today's conversation with you, what do you want them to remember that Brandy Bean said to them? A truth that they can speak over themselves every day, maybe even write it in their mirror or put it on a post-it note and put it on their dashboard. Hmm. Well, I think there's been a lot of good truths in our interview. Yes. Um, so just for my, where I am at, yeah. one thing that I remind myself on the daily is to be true who to who you are mm-hmm. and to be comfortable with who you are Ooh, yeah. and to not make excuses for who you are. Woo! Woo! Hold on. I'm writing oh. it down. Okay. <laughs> be true to who you are. Be, be comfortable. comfortable with who yeah, you are. Don't make excuses. And don't make excuses for... Girl, that's some good stuff. Yes. Bam, mic drop. Cue the music. I love it. Um, Brandy, thank you so much for oh, being thank on you. the this show. Awesome. Yeah, it's been incredible. It's just been such a blessing to get to know you. Um, that's one of the reasons I love doing this podcast is I just get to know incredible women like you that yes. – I never would have connected with, you know, that it's just, I know I'm, I'm so blessed. Thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun and hopefully you'll join us on our podcast. I absolutely will. It'd be my honor. Hey friends. Wasn't that an incredible uh, conversation with my friend Brandy? I'll tell you what, I just really admire her for her humility, for her willingness to be so transparent and vulnerable with us. And I just know that you've been encouraged by that today. Hey, listen, be sure to, uh, Pop on over to Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts and follow See How I Did That, Brandy Bean's podcast with her mom. And hey, guess what? I'm actually featured on the show this coming Monday, which is tomorrow, the 30th of March. I will be premiering my own interview with them on the See How I Did That podcast. So I've included those links in the show notes below. Again, a special thanks to my friend and partner, musician Derek Kretzer, for creating the music for this podcast and partnering with me to bring you some beautiful tunes to listen to as we close out. 
Hey, listen, one more thing. Remember, you can get thriving thoughts via text from me, straight from me, three times a week. All you have to do is text the word thrive, that's T H R I V E, to 540 369 2139, and you'll be signed up to receive a text from me. And yes, you can text me back. All right, my friends, remember until next time, speak truth over the little lies so you too can thrive in any and every circumstance.